Turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 18. I am so thankful. I enjoy getting a chance to preach whenever I can. I was I was riding the lawnmower yesterday at the house trying to get the grass cut and all and I as I was trying to get that done, I just put you know that's the best time because there's nobody around but me and the lawnmower and whatever animals are trying to get at me, flies or mosquitoes or things like that. And I just was thinking, you know, things going through my mind uh, and what, what God was doing, and I had no idea that Brother Mark had called my house, called my phone, and uh, when I got back inside, I, I noticed he called a I called him back, and he said, yes, he said what, what he needed, and I said, sure. I don't turn down, because I feel like if God gives me the, the time to do it, he's going to make it able to do it. And to me, that's what's important to me, is um, we come in contact with everybody ar around us. We need to make sure that they know Christ is in control of our lives. And uh, it's amazing at school. Uh, kids always ask me, how's your wife doing? I mean, we're talking 6th, 7th, and 8th, and ninth, 10th, 11th graders, even 12th graders. They have a thought. And my goal is to teach them that Christ is in control. You know, we don't know everything that's going to happen. We don't know why it's happening. And to this day, I don't know why it's happening. But God does. And so when I, as I was sitting there riding the lawnmower, I was thinking about a lot of things. And uh, I thought about this. I remember going to Brother Paul's church, a friend of mine that I used to sing with. and uh, Yeah, also Old Soldiers Road up there. I used to uh, I'd go and sing for him and got a chance to preach a couple of times. And I, uh, they had a, a guy that was a potter. And I remember he actually brought the potter's wheel, and he, in the message, he was actually doing it. It was awesome to see. Some of the things, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot about it, but it, uh, it came, to, came to life as I saw what took place. And when we look at this, God's trying to get attention to us, and I think he uses this for And if you look at verse 1, he says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine hand, O house of Israel. At what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that the chance to preach, Lord. Now, help me just listen to you and you speak through me. Lord, help us to get your word, what you want us to know, what you want us to understand. And, Lord, that we will be a blessing to those around us. They will see Christ in our lives. They will see things that, that go in our lives as we go through. And all they'll see is Christ. Lord, help us to be the witness that we can be around those. Help us, Lord, to look to you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I picked the song this morning when I, when, when I decided this is what God wanted. And I like the song. You know, we talk about the potter quite a bit. And uh, I had two of them, um, one by the Listers and then this one. But, you know, it says there's lots of things that we're going through. 
We need to understand. So when we look at this, number one, clay is very brittle. You have clay, you try to put it together, and if you don't get it mixed just right, guess what? It breaks. It falls apart. It goes. It doesn't work very well. I've seen kids, as being principal and all in the schools, I've seen kids make things out of clay, and they sit out there, and they get dry, and heads fall off, and arms fall off, and things like that. When I, when I was looking at this, you know, in the, in the clay, in, in the, the potter's house, he has a wheel. In that wheel, he has water, and in that wheel, he has motion. And when he starts to, to, to move that around, it begins to be more pliable. As a Christian, we ought to be pliable. We ought to be willing to do what he says. Sometimes it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes it's not always the best thing that we think. But God knows. God has that understanding. God knows what lies ahead of us. We don't. I've said this a lot of times. I said, you know, I wish, I wish God would tell us this is what's happening and this is what's going to happen down the road. It'd be nice. But he doesn't seem to do that to us. He just wants us to have, by, have faith and to do what he has us to do. That's what should be important to us, is to keep it. So when we realize it, he puts it on that. Uh, I remember seeing that guy, and he had it out here, and he put that clay on there, and, and the water began to go, and he began to use his hands to make a, a pitcher or, pro, uh, or a, a glass or, a, I mean, a, a cup or something like that. And every once in a while, something would happen, and it would fall over, or he'd get a hole in it. And he'd take that same clay, and he'd put it back together, and he'd make it sort of work. I was reading a thing on the, on the Internet, and it says the person that was talking about the clay said that the right hand uh, exerts more pressure, clay would rise and then collapse. You put that right hand too much in there, it's going to come up, but then it falls through. When you use the left hand, the more pressure she could do into it, it, you can shape it any way. Now, I don't know. I would never, I would, I, I would never try it because there's no telling what I would do to that clay. You know, it just don't work to me. But to watch somebody who's skillful at it, that's just like watching people who are skillful at building buildings. <coughs> I'm sorry. We're going to live with this part today. It's, I can't help it. Why I brought me a big, a big thing of water. Try to get it so it doesn't. I don't cough too much, but I did that in school. I'd start, I start coughing as I teach, and uh, I'm teaching 14 classes in six periods, and so it takes just about all the time in there to get through it. And some, the other day, I just got to the point that I said, "Okay, y'all read. I'm gonna sit down and be quiet for a minute." Because it just, I mean, I just kept going. But, but you know, God, God knows what he's doing. And God has a reason for it. But as that pressure goes on there, he could, you know, that, that potter began to make that uh, picture. It was amazing to see him as he made it. And he set it there to let it dry. That's what God wants to do to us. He wants to use us so that they can see Christ in our life. They can see the right kind of things in our life. It's very, very important that we were willing to hear him when he says. You know, that's like a lot of times we always use this good as an illustration. I remember when I was getting ready to go to go, leave junior college, I decided I wanted to be an accountant. Accountant has, you know, they, 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 there's a lot of m n uh, numbers Numbers don't bother me. Math don't bother me. But I remember as I went, I, my mind was on one thing. My mind was on what they could make. And I already had some ideas in my head that, you know what, I can get that job. They will make good money. And I can get my wife this kind of car, and I can get me this kind of car. I mean, you can see where I was going with it. This is what I was looking at. And God said, no. 
God shut the door. So I thought, you know, my mom had developed cancer and she'd had some rough times through there. And uh, I just said, oh, okay, well, I'll do it again because it had to do with my mom. Nowhere was I thinking it had to do with God, to be honest with you. So I started again. But this second time, he didn't just shut the door. He slammed the door. And I realized at that point, there was nothing. I didn't know what, what he wanted me to do. And then I began to ask God, okay, what, what is, what's important to your, for my life? And as I went back to work a few days later, uh, I lost my job. I spent three years unemployed. I worked. Now, I mean, I didn't sit home and do nothing. I did. I worked for five school districts on their sub list. And every time they called, I worked, no matter what. I had a friend of mine who allowed, he, he was building a KOA down the, down the street, and he allowed me to come dig ditches, paint, you name it, he allowed me to do it. One day I was driving by, and there was a guy taking singles off a roof, and I stopped, and I said, sir, I'll clean this up for you if you'll pay me. He goes, okay. I, he said, when can you start? I said, right now. I got out of my car, and I started working. God took care of us. God's trying to tell us things to do, and we need to look and see what God's trying to help us with. During that time frame, not having a full-time job, my oldest daughter was diagnosed a diabetic. Spent eight days in the hospital. No insurance, but God took care of her. When we got time and we got that done, and lo and behold, the, hot, the doctor bill started coming in, God took care of her. See, God was telling me something. I didn't need to be that accountant that made lots of money and had this car and that car and this truck and that truck and this thing and that thing. He said, no, I'll take care of you. In 30 years of teaching at a Christian school, now, they don't pay much. You know, I'm sorry, they don't. I used to, when, when we had our school here, uh, Teach, people would come by, and I'd say, well, our teachers <coughs> make between 15000 and 18000 a year. They go, how do they live? I said, God. That's the only thing I can say. God. How did we make it? God did it. God supplied. God was trying to teach me, this is what you need to do. Three years worth. I was, I guess I was too stubborn and too hard headed. I wasn't listening good. Three years I spent without a full time job. And God opened the door to go teach fourth grade. And I've been teaching no fourth grade. I teach high school junior high and high school now, but for almost thirty three years is what I'm going on now. God said, I want to show you something. You don't need all this extra money. I'll take care of you. I mean, my wife had her first heart attack. Neither one of us had reached Medicare age yet. And uh, I mean, it was on a Sunday. Actually, on my birthday three years ago. She, uh, I told her, I said, I don't want birthday presents tomorrow. But she, uh, we took her in. And the first bill we got was a quarter of a million dollars. I said, Lord, how are we going to make this? No way of knowing. God said, look, you get in this, you let me mold that clay, and you do what I want you to do. He did. I'm 68 years old. God's taking care of us. Now we both have Medicare, so we're a whole lot better off. <laughs> but God still takes care of us. God's trying to be that potter to take us 
through that with that clay and mold us into what we need to be? Are we willing to do it? You know, that's the sad thing about it. Most people have been in church all their life, and they just don't allow it. They don't take it. They don't do with it. But God wants to mold us. I've led the music here at the church for umpteen dozen years. I think I led the music for my dad for 22 years. Then I went off to uh, Greenwood Village and led the music for almost 10, 10 or 11 years and then came back. And I, uh, it's just something I felt like this is what God wanted me to do. And so we did it. But, you know, I've led the singing with laryngitis. That sounded really bad. I made sure at that time I sang with the microphone way down here so y'all could hear it during that time frame. But God's taken care of us through everything. We need to realize that God's going to put us through whatever we need to. We just need to say, Lord, I'll do it. Bottom line, Lord, I'll do it. The older I get, the less I can do, but I'm working at it. We need to say, Lord, okay, this is what you want. He said, then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made was clay was marred. So he said, he did it again. God realizes that we are not perfect. We are not going to be perfect. You know, when we, when we get to heaven, we'll be perfect at that point. I make a lot of mistakes in my life. As I teach math, I've heard, stu I've heard teachers say, well, I made that mistake, so I wanted to see if y'all would catch it. No, I made that mistake because I messed up. Bottom line. And I tell them, I said, you look. I said, if you see a mistake, call me. Call me, Miss Riley, that's not right. That's okay. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Because I want them to, to learn and understand. Because God is helping me to teach them to get to school, to go to college, to get whatever, whatever God wants in store for them down the road. And that's what, sh that's what we should be doing. What does God have in store for you? I don't know. When I had a kid ask me one day, he said, Mr. Welling, how do you know what God wants? I said, I don't. I wish I could tell you the answer, but it doesn't come. <coughs> At some point you realize this is what God wants. I never, never forget when I surrendered full time. I, I, I'd been praying. We'd been talking. Me and Deb been talking. And right in the middle of the service, my dad was preaching. And uh, at the end of the service, I told Deb, I said, okay, I know what God wants. She said, okay. She didn't say, what are you going to do? He figured if God wants it, then we're going to do it. And that should be our goal, is to do what God wants us to do. That's why I need to be in church every time these doors are open. Sick? I can't help that part. But if I'm not sick, guess what? We need to be here. Because God is wants to take that clay. And when we make a mistake, he said, okay, come back. Let me redo it. Be willing to say, Lord, okay, I'm coming back. I will let you redo it. Some people get to the point that, you know what, I can't. I'm just going to leave. I've seen so many people walk out church doors and never darken the church door because they made a mistake. They are preachers that made a mistake. Preachers aren't perfect. God's given them a lot of uh, things to do. But not once do you say they're perfect. When they make a mistake, we pray for them and say, okay, God, just help that point and get going, get going where you need to be going. should be important to us. That's what we need to be doing. We need to say, Lord, this is what you have in store for me. So we're willing to, we're willing to listen. We're willing, willing to pay attention. Excuse me. 
Then he goes on. He says in verse 5, he said, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. God says, will you listen to me like this potter gets with this clay? I want you to do that. When I say come to the potter's house, we need to come to the potter's house. We need to say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? You know, sometimes we need to know God is saying, okay, hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. It's amazing how God can let us know what if we just listen. If we'll sit back and pay attention to him. That's why I think a lot of times when people, they don't go and come to church because they're afraid God wants them to do something. And you know what? I just don't know if I want to do that. Well, it's not my job to want to do it or not. If God says do it, he'll take care of us. He's taken care of this church for 60 years. And we've had our ups and our downs and uh, all sorts of things. I remember one time we had, we had over, over right, between over 579 they counted. But we had a guy that was 7 foot 8 inches tall and a guy that was 4 foot 11. Little George Havens and Max Palmer. Max Palmer's already gone to be with the Lord. I just remember him. He stood flat-footed and grabbed my basketball goal in front of my house like this without, without standing on his tiptoes. He was huge. I remember Daddy went and picked him up in a Volkswagen. That poor guy, when he come rolling out of that thing, I mean, that was something else. He had scooted the seat all the way back. His knees were underneath his chin. Well, we had a lot of people come through that day. They came to see seven foot eight. And 411. That's what they came to see. But they heard a message. And that was the important part. Sometimes there's things to do that God says, I want to happen. I remember having vacation Bible school in the front of the old church, the old building. And I remember one, of them, one time they, just, they did a, uh, a spaceship was supposed to go off. And when they, the, that Friday morning, when that thing went off, the spaceship fell apart. It was so, the kids thoroughly enjoyed it. I remember seeing, you know, we did lots of things. But we were here to do one thing. Win souls to Christ. That's what we're here to do, is to win souls for Christ. You know, well, I can't do this or I can't do it. But you know what? We can come in contact with anybody. You go out to eat, give them a track. And give them a good tip. But God says, I want to mold you into what I want you to be. Not what you want to be. But what I want you to be, that's what he wants to do. And if we'll continue to do that, he says, Behold the potter hand so that you are mine hand and old house of Israel. We ought to know God, is in, God, God has us in his hands. Well, Lord, I just can't make, I seem like I, this and that's falling apart. No. Hey, God's hands. If we're doing God's will, we're in God's hands. And it may not, God does not promise us a million dollars. Never has he promised that. I always say he probably would never give me that because I wouldn't know how to handle it. You know, you, people used to always say, my ship's coming in. My ship done sink a long time ago. It ain't coming at all. But as long as I stay close to God, that should be what we need to do. God's saying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to take care of you if you'll just listen. And he goes on to say, in verse 7, he says, At what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turns from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. You know, if we as a nation would turn back to God, 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 get, God bit right back behind us. But you look what's going on in our, our nation today. It's just sad. I remember when I was a kid. I know kids think, more, were the dinosaurs still roaming around? No, there was no dinosaurs. I know I'm old, but not that old. But I remember being around. And, you know, things began, you know, people would ask before, before they did anything. 
You know, Lord, what should I do? Now, it wasn't everybody perfect. But people would do something. We'd see them come in church at times. God has a reason for us. But God said sometimes it's going to happen. But if you, if you will repent and turn, your, turn back to God, I'm right there with you. I'm helping you. And that should be what we're after. He goes, he says, if it do, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said, and I would benefit them. He said, now therefore go to, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, thus saith the Lord, behold, <coughs> I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from, this, from his evil way and make your ways and you're, do, you're doing good. That's what he's asking for us to do. If you see what's going on in our world, you ought to say, Lord, what do we need to do? You know, this church ought to be full with everything going on. People ought to be coming back to God in droves. And they're not. Because the devil says, oh, everything's okay. Don't worry about it. No, everything's not okay. We need to get in that potter's hand and allow that potter to mold us and to make us and to do things with ours that we will get back and do the things God wants us to do. Do the things God wants in our life. That's important. <coughs> when I thought about the potter and I thought about the clay, I'm the clay, and I sure need God to help me and, and put to me the way that I need to be. And I ask that you ask God to help you get where you need to be, whatever that might be. Maybe you're not at the right job you ought to be at. I don't know. But you need to ask God to help you. That should be important in our lives, is to do what God would have us do, because that potter is very good at molding. And he can mold us if we're willing to say, yes, Lord. This is what I want to do. Let's bow our heads. I Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you've given us. I ask you, Lord, that you'll just help and bless us, that what takes place, Lord, will be exactly what you want. We'll see a nation turn back to God. We'll see our church turn back to God. We'll just see, Lord, that things happen that should be happening. Lord, I ask you, start with me. Start with me. And if each one of us will ask you, Lord, to start with us, we'll see, us, we'll see something happen. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll stand to your feet, I'll get the men to do a